Hello again. Um, so this is the flip chart part three. And so we're going to do exponents and radicals. So exponents, uh, the little numbers that's in the upper right hand corner. So let's go ahead and do exponents first. So in exponents, if the bases are the same when you multiply, you keep the base the same and you add the exponents. If there's one base, with an exponent and another exponent on the outside, you multiply them. Um, if you have a division, so when you're multiplying, you add. So when you divide, you subtract. So you would do, you keep the x the same, and then you would subtract eight minus two and get six. So I'm multiplying, you keep the base the same, add the exponents, dividing, you keep the base the same, and you subtract. Um, if, it, if the bottom is larger than the top, or the denominator's value exponent is larger than the numerator, and you subtract, you would get x to the negative sixth. And remember, you can't leave a negative exponent in the, in the numerator, so, or actually anywhere. So you would have to move it to the denominator, and you would get that. Um, it also works if you have numbers. So if you had like three to the eighth, times three to the fifth, you would get three to the 13th, because eight plus five is 13. Also, any value to the power, any variable or number to the power of zero is one. Uh, just be careful, sometimes they try to trick you. Like if you had five x all to the zero like that, only the x is getting the zero. So x to the zero is one, and then five times one is five. So don't let them trick you. If you have something like this that says the opposite of 3 squared, then your 3 squared is 9, and the opposite of 9 is negative 9. But if you want negative 3 squared, you have to put parentheses around it. And that means negative 3 times negative 3, and you get 9. Um, if you have it, uh, obviously I could have done these all with, with variable exponents, but instead I used numbers, but it really doesn't matter. So like if I had a to the negative n, that's the same thing as 1 over a to the n. And say I had 1 over n to the negative 6, and I have a negative in the bottom. I've got to move it to the top, and I would just get n to the 6th. Um, whenever you're doing exponents and you have something like 27 to the 1 3rd, well, that's the same thing as the cube root of 27, which means what times what times what is 27, which would be 3. So a denominator tells you what root to take, and this is called the index. So if it said 27 to the 2 thirds power, we would still do the cube root of 27, and then we would square it. So we already know the cube root of 27 is 3, so we get 3 squared, which is 9. So the numerator is just the exponent, and the denominator tells you what root to take or what index that should be. If I have it in parentheses, say I have 2xy to the third, and I go all to the fourth, everybody in the parentheses gets that fourth. So 2 to the fourth means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And then 1 times 4 is x to the fourth, and 3 times 4 is 12. And you would get that. Um, be careful, a lot of times whenever the denominator has a negative in it, sometimes people mess up a little bit. So 2 minus negative 5 is 7. So just be careful. Another way to think of it is you could move that to the top, and then you would get x squared times x to the fifth, and then you would add the exponents and still get 7. Remember, though, real important, if you have x squared, no matter what x is, your answer is always positive. So if you have x squared, and I tell you um, that x is negative 3, then that does have assumed parentheses and you would get positive nine. Uh, if there was a coefficient in the front here, you would go ahead and get the nine, and then you would times by whatever that coefficient is. So just be careful. Whenever it's an x squared, your answer is always positive. If it's a negative x squared, your answer is always negative. Okay, so now let's talk about radicals. Um, we did a little bit uh, up here, down here with some radicals, but let's go through some radicals more. So we're gonna do radicals. And radicals 
So like if I had the nth root of a to the x, okay? Um, the index is n, the exponent is x. So if I was gonna write this in exponential form, that would be a to the x over n power. So this is the index and this is the exponent. Okay, if I had the nth root of just a, then that would just be a to the one over n. So if I had numbers, say I had the cube root of x to the fifth, then that's x to the five thirds. If I had um, the cube root of two to the fifth, that would be two to the five thirds. And say I had the cube root of something that was cube rootable, cube rootable, like the cube root of eight, you're asking yourself what times what times what is eight? And you would just say two. And say it said the opposite of the cube root of eight, you would get negative two. Um, just to do a couple more examples, if I had the square root of 16 x to the eighth y squared, and then let's just have a random n in there. The index of a square root is a two. So what times itself is 16? Hopefully you're saying four. The square root of x to the eighth, how many pairs are in x times x times x times x, whatever, eight times? There are four pairs, so it's x to the fourth. And then the square root of y squared is y, and technically you should put absolute values around the y. Um, and then this n doesn't have any friends, it has to stay in the house all alone. So it stays, and because it doesn't, not, doesn't have any pairs to come out. So if I had an odd number, like the square root of x to the ninth, the x to the fourth would come out, and then that one lonely x would have to stay in. Um, fractions, same thing. If I had the square root of six over 25, do I know the square root of six? No. Do I know the square root of 25? Yes, five. Okay, if I had, um, now, if it was the other way around, though, say it said the square root of 25 over 6, I would get 5 over the square root of 6. But remember, you can't leave a square root in the denominator. It's like illegal. So you times the top and the bottom by the square root of 6 over the square root of 6, and you would get 5 square root of 6 over 6. So you're not allowed to leave any negative exponents unless the directions tell you to specifically. And you're not allowed to leave a square root in the denominator. Okay, um, let's go over just one more, like simplifying the square root of 40. Okay, so the square root of 40 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And I know the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 10 is 2 times 5, and there's no pairs in there, so I just leave it. So you take out what you can, and you uh, leave in what you can't. And that's pretty much exponents and radicals.